Tipton Radar Stats Analyzer by double-clicking the shortcut icon on your desktop or from the Programs list in the Start menu. Connect to the radar by selecting File, Connect to Radar. The Stats Analyzer program has a feature to find the speed lane connected to the Ethernet port of your PC. It should be listed as Local Network Radar. If you do not see Local Network Speed Lane Radar in the pull-down menu on this screen, wait a few more seconds, close the window, and try it again. To begin the installation setup, please click the Installation Wizard tab on the software and follow the instructions. Ensure that the speed lane clock and units are suitable for your time zone and country. Units cannot be modified for data that is already captured, and all existing data is erased if you modify units in the future. This screen shows the camera view as well as the level and tilt readings. These are automatically refreshed every few seconds for convenience. You may consider bringing along handheld radios to communicate with the installer on the bucket truck. While you watch the camera image and level readings from your vehicle, you will be able to provide feedback on how to adjust the unit as it is strapped to the pole. The first step is to get the speed lane level to the road surface. If your road is level, this means that you should loosen the screws in the smiley face bracket and adjust the speed lane until the level reading is within a few degrees of zero. If you know or suspect that the road surface itself is not level, then it may be best to get a reading of the road level by placing the speed lane on the road surface and taking a level reading from this page. You should then strive to get the speed lane level to that same value in this step. Once the speed lane is level, a technician will magically appear to turn the speed lane on the pole to orient it so that all lanes are visible and it is pointed straight across the road. You should orient the speed lane so that the road or lane edge markers are parallel to the bottom or top of the photo and the red crosshairs, which mark the center of the radar beam, are pointed somewhere between one third and one half of the lanes to be measured. For best results, it is important to ensure that all or at least some portion of the first and last lane to be measured are visible. The radar beam is somewhat wider than the camera view, so as long as some portion of the lane is visible, traffic on it should be detected. The image on the screen shows a properly aligned speed lane. The lane edge lines and the center divider are aligned to the top and bottom of the photo, and the red crosshairs are approximately pointed to the third lane out of a total of eight lanes to be measured. Go ahead and tighten all screws and bands to secure the speed lane on the road. These include the bolts in the smiley plate on the back and the bolts that clamp the speed lane tube. You can hand tighten the tube clamping bolts down all the way using the provided Allen key without any danger of crushing the tube. They are designed to be fully tightened. Dress the cables through the provided grommets on the back plate so that they are strain relieved and do not tug on the connectors. Sidefire radars will detect all stationary objects in their view that reflect the microwave signal back. These objects include lane dividers, jersey barriers, curbs, poles, trees, etc. They are not important targets and can actually interfere with proper detection. This is called background clutter. The radar keeps what is known as a clutter map consisting of these targets so that they may be removed and not affect actual detection of vehicles in the lanes. The clutter map is kept up to date continuously. The rate of adjustment can be specified by the user via the clutter time constant, but a default value of 15 minutes is used by the wizard. If you expect major congestion or stop traffic on this location, you should increase this value appropriately. The user manual discusses this in more detail. In this step, the radar will quickly learn the background clutter for this location and use this acquired data as a starting value to adjust from. It is important to ensure that the view of the radar is clear of any unusual items like bucket trucks. You should also ensure that the radar has been tightened to the pole and will not move. If the radar orientation varies, the entire clutter map will also vary. Finally, it's important to ensure that traffic is not stopped or heavily congested in front of the radar at this time. If the radar is at a location where a traffic signal is causing backup, please wait until traffic starts moving normally before going on to the next step. Once you enter this screen, the radar automatically starts learning the background clutter in view. Clutter is any target that is not moving for more than 5 to 6 seconds. It is important that traffic in front of the radar is moving normally. Otherwise, it will be viewed as clutter and will result in poor detection for several minutes until the clutter map is updated automatically. We will now set up lanes in the radar to match lanes on the road. As traffic is flowing in front of the radar, you will notice two squiggly lines, one red and one green. The two colors represent real tracking information from the two beams of the radar. Since a dual beam radar directly measures speed and length of vehicles, you will see a speed and length value printed alongside each detected target. Do not be concerned if the travel direction on the display does not yet match the travel direction of the vehicles. This is because the display obeys the lane direction that we will set up in this screen, but the default shows vehicles traveling from right to left. There is a handy feature that keeps track and shows the range of all detected targets. This is represented by peaks building up on the left side of the range plot. For every target detected, it will add a peak at the corresponding range. This allows you to see where vehicles are traveling and where to place lane boundaries. 
We will now wait for some traffic to flow and several peaks to build up in the lanes we want to set up. If you have blocked the closest lane, it may be advantageous to allow traffic back on that lane. Otherwise, it may be difficult to know where to draw the first lane. Be aware that traffic in the nearest lane may move over to avoid your vehicle or workers, so peaks in the first lane may be biased compared to the real lane on the road. Finally, notice that every detected target has several colored or blank rectangles next to it. This is the RSS or Receive Signal Strength Indicator. For best results, you should verify that all vehicles in all lanes are showing at least three or more RSS bars. If you are not getting three or more filled bars, you may not have a good BGC or the radar pointing may be off. It is important to be pointed as close to a right angle relative to the vehicle's sides as possible for maximum RSS. Also, if you are too close to the first lane, the radar may be pointed more at the roofs of the vehicles than at the sides. In these cases, the mirror effect will cause the radar waves to reflect away from the radar rather than back to it. If you continue to have problems detecting targets properly, please contact us with some images of the road from the radar's camera and details of the setup. We will be more than happy to assist you. We now have a sufficient height of peaks to start drawing lanes on the screen. Right mouse click on the plot and select Define New Lane from the pop-up menu. If you right mouse click on the right side of the vertical line in the middle of the screen, the lane direction will be left to right. If you right mouse click on the left side of that line, the default direction of the new lane will be right to left. All directions are with respect to the view from the radar camera. If you accidentally started in the wrong side, do not worry, you can easily flip the direction of the new lane as will be shown later. We highly recommend that you start the lanes from the closest lane to the radar and continue up from there so that the lane numbers are increasing the further away you get from the radar. Once you start drawing a lane, the software will draw a red line that will move as you move the mouse. This line will correspond to the start of the lane boundary. To place it, simply click the left mouse key where you want the lane to start. This will immediately bring up the end of the lane boundary. Click again to place it appropriately on the range plot. If you place any boundaries incorrectly, you can easily edit them, and this process will be demonstrated later. In this example, the closest lane is an exit lane that we do not want to measure, as we are only measuring the through lanes. This is why we start our first lane in the radar after the first peak of traffic corresponding to the exit lane on the road. Note that as soon as we completed drawing the right traveling lane, all targets within that lane are now displayed going from left to right. A few other important points to keep in mind. There should not be a gap between adjacent lanes if there is no gap between lanes on the road. Draw one lane for every lane of traffic on the road. Do not try to cover more than one lane of traffic with only one wide lane in the radar. The software will allow this, but will give you a warning. Finally, lanes cannot overlap. The software will give you an error message and not save your last definition if you draw overlapping lanes. If you accidentally draw an overlapping lane, you can easily select the Edit Lanes menu option and adjust the lane boundaries. In the wizard, the software automatically saves your lane definitions to the radar as you make modifications. In this example, lanes 4 and up are traveling left, but we started drawing them from the right side of the middle line so they defaulted to traveling right. We will now correct that. Notice the lane direction arrow on the screen flipped from pointing left and also moved to the left side of the center dividing line. Verify the width of all lanes to make certain that they are reasonable and closely match the real width on the road. Lanes closest to the radar may appear slightly narrower on the setup than the real lane due to the perspective view of the radar. This is normal and acceptable. Once you are satisfied with the lane boundaries, lane widths, lane directions, and you have eliminated any gaps between lane boundaries that do not exist on the road, click Next on the screen to answer some questions about the installation. Most defaults should be acceptable on this screen. Click Finish to complete the wizard setup and you will be taken to the radar setup screen. From here, you can set up other features such as vehicle length bends, speed bends, etc. Be certain to click the Finish button and the wizard will write some final configuration values back to the radar.
This radar is equipped with an internal 3G modem and will connect to the Houston Radar Tetrion server for online access. Every customer is provided a unique customer ID that allows the server to identify the radar when it calls in, so that the data will be available in the appropriate customer account. Please enter the customer ID if one is provided to you. If you do not have a customer ID, you can click on the Create Account button to go to a new account page on the Tetrion server webpage. From here, you may request an account. We provide 60-day demo accounts at no extra cost so that you may try out this feature. Make certain to click the Save button once you are done making all setup adjustments. This will save the configuration back to the radar. You can then click over to the Connection tab and disconnect from the radar.